The tank, cruiser, MK-7 or A-15 Crusader was a primary British cruiser tank of the early Second World War, and it was possibly the most important British tank of the North African campaign. The Crusader's mobility made it popular among British tank crews, and once equipped with the Ordnance QF-6 pounder main gun, it was more than a match for the early Panzer III and Panzer IV tanks it encountered in combat. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced MBTs at present. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's dive in! Retained in service due to delays in replacement, the Crusader was replaced in the main line of battle by US-supplied M3 Grant and Sherman medium tanks by late 1942 due to a lack of armament upgrade, the presence of Tiger I tanks among the Africa Corps, and reliability issues due to the harsh desert conditions. The Cromwell Heavy Cruiser would be the next British cruiser in action. Nuffield Mechanization and Aero Limited developed the A-16 design for a heavy cruiser tank based on Christie suspension in 1938. The general staff requested alternatives in order to build a lighter and less expensive tank. To that end, the A-13 MK-3 cruiser tank design, which would enter service as the Tank Cruiser MK-5, would be known as Covenanter, in service, was created. In 1939, Nuffield was approached about participating in the production of Covenanter. Nuffield, on the other hand, preferred to work on its own version of the A-13, though they did design work for the Covenanter's turret. Under General Staff Specification A-15, this new tank was designated as Tank Cruiser MK-6 Crusader. Although the Crusader is frequently described as an improved version of the Covenanter, it was actually a parallel design. Both tanks were ordered off the drawing board without first building prototypes. Despite a later start, the Crusader pilot model was ready six weeks before the first Covenanter. Unlike previous Christie cruisers, A-13, Marks 3 and 4, and the Mark V Covenanter, which had four road wheels on each side, the Crusader had five road wheels on each side to improve weight distribution in a tank that weighed nearly 20 tons instead of the 14 tons of the previous cruisers. The 32-inch diameter wheels were made of pressed steel and had solid rubber tires. The hull sides were constructed from two separate plates with the suspension arms sandwiched between them. It was powered by a different engine than the Covenanter, had a different steering system, and used a traditional cooling system with radiators in the engine compartment. A small hand-traversed auxiliary turret armed with a base of machine gun was mounted on the front hull's left side, where the engine radiator was in the Covenanter. The auxiliary turret was difficult to operate and was frequently removed or left unoccupied in the field. The A-13 MK-3 and A-15 both used the same main turret. To maximize turret space on the limited turret diameter, the turret was polygonal, with sides that sloped out, then in. Early production vehicles had a semi-internal cast gun mantlet, which was quickly replaced in production by a larger cast mantlet with three vertical slits, one for the main gun, one for a coaxial basin machine gun, and one for the sighting telescope. The commander had no cupola, only a flat hatch with the periscope mounted through it. As with other British tanks of the time, the main armament was balanced so that the gunner could control its elevation through a padded shaft against his right shoulder rather than a geared mechanism. This was consistent with British doctrine of firing accurately while moving. When it became clear that the introduction of successor heavy cruiser tanks, what would become the Cavalier, Centaur, and Cromwell, would be delayed, the Crusader was modified to use the six-pounder gun. There were command tanks equipped with a dummy gun and two powerful No. 19 radios, in addition to a limited number of CS or close support infantry tanks equipped with 76mm howitzers based on regular Mark I and II. Many Mark III's were converted into artillery observation mobile posts prior to the Battle of El Alamein. A fixed turret, dummy gun, number 18 and number 19 radios, and a broader empty interior filled with maps, boards, and equipment were among the modifications. Many retired or partially cannibalized Mark I and II's were also used for deception plans, most notably at El Alamein and later in southern England during Operation Fortitude. Many surviving Crusader III's were converted into auxiliary mobile AA batteries with a 40mm QF Bofors mounted in a turret-like shield. The Mark II and Mark III AA variants were equipped with a twin and later a rare triple or Lycan 20mm mount and A303 Vickers GO machine gun. 
few of them saw action in Europe due to Allied air superiority. They were mostly used as mobile local defense posts near airfields, ammunition storage facilities, headquarters, and so on. Retired Mark IIs were frequently converted into gun tractors, towing the effective but heavy QF-17 PDR-80 gun. Their superstructure was replaced with a large boxy structure with 14 mm thick plates and a crew of six. The speed was still reasonable at 27 miles per hour. They were used as command tanks, scouts, and artillery observation vehicles during the D-Day invasion, and many remained in service until the end of the war. By 1941, Commonwealth tank crews had been outfitted with Crusaders, South Africans, New Zealanders, and Australians are among those affected. Other nationalities, such as some Free French and Dutch units, were also equipped in increasing numbers as the Crusaders were replaced in British service. During Rommel's advance, the Axis captured some Mark I and IIs, and both the Littorio Armored Division and the German 15th Panzer Division used many captured models to compensate for their own losses. They valued their speed and low profile in operations, but were constrained by a lack of spare parts. The Canadian cavalry units fighting in Italy were also given Crusader threes. Many were sold to the Argentinians after the war, who converted them into motorized gun carriages armed with modern 75 and 105 mm guns. The Crusader, particularly the Mark III, was viewed as a stopgap until the arrival of heavier cruisers, which were currently being developed and tested. The AT-6 PDR would be required for all. The Directorate of Tanks and Transport's mid 1940 specification targeted three companies, Volhall, which produced the Churchill tank, and both Nuffield and the Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon Company, which produced the Crusader. Despite being faster than any tank it faced, the Crusader's potential was limited by a relatively light QF-2 pounder gun, thin armor, and mechanical issues. The lack of a high explosive shell for the main armament was a particular tactical limitation. These existed but were never supplied. By retiring behind a screen of concealed anti-tank guns, Axis tank forces developed an extremely effective method of dealing with attacking tank forces. The artillery could then engage the pursuing tanks. With the German anti-tank guns out of range of the tank's machine guns and no high explosive shell to return fire, the tanks were forced to choose between withdrawing under fire and attempting to overrun the gun screen. When hit, the Crusader caught fire, which was traced back to ammunition being ignited by hot metal penetrating the unprotected racks. When hit by a shell, the turret's angled underside created shell pockets, which acted as a lever to lift the turret from its mounting. In the desert, the Crusader proved unreliable. This began with their transportation from the United Kingdom to North Africa. Poor preparation and handling caused problems that had to be fixed before they could be passed on to the regiments, consuming the spare parts supply. Once in use, the sand eroded the cooling system, and the stresses of long-distance travel caused oil leaks in the engine blocks. Due to the scarcity of tank transporters and railways in the desert, the tanks had to travel long distances on their tracks, causing additional wear. The Nuffield designers rushed to produce an upgraded Crusader, the A24 Cavalier, also known as the Cromwell I later on. The Cavalier was quickly approved by the Army and developed in such a hurry under existing components and the Crusader Nuffield Liberty engine that many problems quickly arose in the field. However, with additional armor and equipment, as well as a larger hull, it performed poorly, and only 500 of the original order were built. The development of a heavy cruiser tank resulted in the production of the Cromwell tank, powered by a Rolls-Royce Meteor, alongside the Centaur in 1943. The Cromwell, in turn, influenced the design of the legendary Centurion main battle tank, the most successful British tank of the Cold War. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comments space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.